Welcome to episode 37 of Africanists Assemble, the research project Recalibrating Africanistic, which publishes this vodcast, has always had the policy of opening up spaces for African languages. That's in fact the reason we made this a video podcast instead of a traditional podcast, so we could feature a variety of languages while providing subtitles to make the content accessible to a broader audience. Many of our contributors took us up on the challenge to contribute in languages other than English over the last three and a half years, but this episode is the very first time that our contributions in African languages outnumber those in English. Are African languages on the rise? <laughs> well, that's not really for me to say, but today is a good day for them. So what was the question that prompted such language diversity? It was this. If you had the power to create a publication of any type, mode, or format in an African language, what kind of publication would you make, and in what language? Enjoy listening to our contributors' ideas for African language publications as they speak in Hausa, Osa, Yoruba, Portuguese, Swahili, Shona, and English. Gaskiya ni kam inna samu dama zan wallafa littafi a Hausa akan wako inda mata Hausawa suke yi a tsakar gida a lokutan da suke yin ayyukan su musamman a lokacin da suke yin daka wanke wanke shara girki ko nika akwai kuma wanda iyayen mu suka yi a da a lokacin da suke yin dabe wato idan mata suka samu kansu a tsakar gida su kadai ba mazaji suna sakewa su yi wakoki a cikin waɗannan waƙoƙin suna sa zunde suna samun dama su yi wa kishiyoyin su bakar magana kuma su yi korafi game da mazajin su da sukunayen su mata musamman uwar miji da ke sa musu ido a harkokin aurin su samun tattara bayanin nan akan waɗannan waƙoƙin a Hausa zai bani dama in ajiye su domin ko ba don ni ba akwai wasu masu bincike akan waƙoƙin Hausawa masu neman ilimi akan ire-irin wa'annan waƙoƙin su ma zai taimaka musu za su iya samun su gane cewa an yi ire-irin wa'annan waƙoƙin a da domin an bar yin su yanzu saboda haka idan na samu daman wallafa littafin nan a cikin Hausa zai taimaka ba don ni ba ba don yanzu ba domin gobe I come from the Luo community of Kenya so the language that I'd like to immortalize with this piece would be using my mother tongue which is Luo the Luo language of the Luo of Kenya and uh what type of publication would I make would be I would of course write a play and this play would be a monologue um in the first person that would speak on grounding the current African in his reality today more often i uh, i find myself reading so many uh, things that uh, from the past and and sort of thinking about the future and i think that the best publication would be a publication on the present that would talk about or speak to the past and of course inspire someone who shall read this in the future as well because i feel like um a lot of us um being a young person living in Africa and in Kenya especially with political climate that is going on in my country currently and just listening to the older generation talk to me about how history is sort of repeating itself i'd like my publication to be a proclamation of the self to transcend every 
emotion that is negative, that is weighing down on this African, that is letting him not think about the future because inherently our ancestors were heavily thinking about the future at their time. And this publication would most definitely be translated into other African languages as well. And being a polyglot myself, I'd advocate that this piece be written in as accurate and as to the point a translation for each and every language that it is translated to, even if it shall one day find its way into the English language. Ukuba bengina wa amandla ukwenza upapashu olungu luimilo se Afrika. Benjinga kala ndiini ke ika ma eliti inzu ya upapashu golwe nko. Lenzu inga papasha zonke inkrobo zo palo. Ingaba lipepa lopando elili mavu inoveli ama bali ama fuchane njalo njalo. Ezi ya kutizi palwe gulu imilo se kosa. Ndiga kwenza ukunge njongo zo kukebisa ulu imilo se kosa. Konukuze isi zukulwana isi zayo sitibani ese usiba ni pepa. Ngo kukulule kileyo ulu imilo se kosa. I have carried this idea in my head for over 20 years, and it's going to be a publication on the least commonly read writers on the African continent. I am, I know that if we talk about African writers, a lot of people would immediately give you names like Chino Achebe, give you names from South Africa, but there are so many other writers on the African continent that are not read. And because of the system of uh, creation of critics paying attention to the big names, we never get to hear about these commonly least read authors or writers. I would like to have a publication. Unfortunately, for now, it has to be in English. And if possible, have a, a pidgin English side of it. But English will be the language I would pursue first to go deep down, dig deep into these writers, list them. There are so many writers in Nigeria that nobody ever hears about. I'm not sure anybody knows that Tony Mario, who is a doctor, writes novels, and he writes very interesting novels. Nobody knows about um, the psychiatric doctor, Femi Olubuli, who writes. Why are they not read? South Africa has a program called the Year of the Writer. Do they also try to focus on, um, well, the medium read, people who are known, but at least have something to show. If you wake me up at night, it would be the idea of having a publication for the least commonly read authors or writers on the African continent, just so that we also have a documentation. Because the argument has always been that in the time Shakespeare was writing, he was not the only one. There were so many others that were not as promoted. I don't want to compete the literary space with the big names, with the Chimamandas of this world, with the Wally Shoenka, with the um, Ngugu Watiogo. I don't want to compete with them, but I just also want to give a little window to those writers and their writings that are never talked about. Or whoever knows that I write poetry and I have um, published myself a number of um, my collections. The world must give us a space. But like they say, it's a fallacy to say, give me a space in the world and I will shake the world. We got to create that space. Be mobani ori ofe, lati si ate jade kakani, e di adula wakan. E we aroso, ni ma akbe jade, ma si be jade ni e di yoruba, to jade de mi. E di ti ma si be, e jade ni, ti ma si si aroso, ni pe, okolo kwa aroso, to un jade le no jome ta ye, e di o yinbo ni un po. Ti aroso, po kwa ba jade ni e di yoruba, a wan, o man to un bo lo jo wadjo a le ri in kanka, ni e di wan. Aroso a de tun jek ke de yoruba ni a wan to un so, Koto yi awan ton so, ti wan ka, ti wan ton kpo si. Ani lo aro so kpo ni e de yoruba.
Observações recentes nas regiões mais rurais do meu país têm revelado uma gritante desconexão dos jovens e adolescentes à vida real, uma visível falta de compromisso com o futuro. Nessas regiões, nota-se um grande desinteresse pela escola e o consumo exagerado da parte menos inteligente dos média, nomeadamente os TikTok, os Instagram e o Facebook. Aqui, os jovens e adolescentes perdem muito tempo a seguir e acompanhar os eventos e os artistas mais badalados do momento, como diz Valete. São estes mesmos artistas que mais promovem banalidades, desvirtuam a mulher e o seu corpo, promovem a promiscuidade sexual e tudo que é próprio de uma vida fútil. Isto depois gera uma geração com uma mentalidade raquítica, a crítica e incapaz de refletir sobre os mais básicos valores da vida e sem plano nenhum para o futuro. Então, se eu pudesse criar uma publicação, talvez seria em forma de vídeos curtos que de tempos em tempos aparecessem no meio da programação que os adolescentes e jovens mais assistem na televisão e também nos médias que eles mais consomem. Estes vídeos seriam de apelo, uma tentativa de persuasão sobre a importância da formação, o valor da mulher e a dignidade do seu corpo, os benefícios de uma vida com propósito, entre outros tópicos afins. Talvez recorreria a mulheres bem-sucedidas para fazer os vídeos. Em relação à língua, recorri ao Imakwa, que é a língua materna falada por maior número de moçambicanos, resultante também de ser a língua da província com maior número de habitantes de Moçambique. Para além disso, esta província é das com nível mais baixo de escolaridade, maior número de desistência escolar na fase da adolescência e maior número de casamentos precoces. A opção por vídeo tem que ver também com a facilidade de consumo do próprio produto, já que uma publicação que exigisse ler já teria um problema adicional, a própria leitura. Ainda assim, o vídeo teria que ser o mais curto possível. If I have the power to make a publication in an African language, I would go for a publication of a literary magazine in Hausa language, where major literary works and ideas will be discussed in the language. The magazine will showcase interviews, news, and reviews of trending topics among the literati. The magazine would also feature an interesting segment for a brief expose on African ethnic groups, their linguistic makeup, and cultural peculiarities. That way, I could educate more Africans about Africa in an African language. My choice of the Hausa language is simple. It is the most widely spoken language in West Africa, and it is also spoken in parts of North Africa and Central Africa. Additionally, more than any other language in West Africa, Hausa has more literates in the language, and that is why the Kano market literature is the most thriving market of indigenous literature in West Africa. With such a magazine, Hausa will come at par with Arabic, English, French, German, and other major languages of the world, especially when it comes to the worlding of literature. Ningepewa fursa ya kuandika ama kutunga kitabu ningechagua kuandika wanawake maarufu wa Kiamu kama eh, rasi ya mwana rasi ya mwana alikuwa malai, alikuwa malkia katika kisiwa cha Manda kuanzia mwaka 1381 mpaka mwaka 1390 eh Mwanamke mwingine ningependa kumwandika katika kitabu changu ni Mwana Masura. Mwana Masura alikuwa mtawala wa kisiwa cha Siu karne 15. Ah na mwingine ni mwanamke maarufu wa Siu ambaye alikuwa mwanachuoni mkubwa hapo Siu naye ni Mwanatao. Mwanatao alikuwa ali, aliwahi kusomesha wanachuoni wingi wa siu na alikufa mwaka wa na sitini. mwaka huo oh, kaburi lake lili alifia siu na kaburi lake mpaka sasa liko siu watu kuja kuzuru 
kutoka mahali mbali mbali kuzuru kaburi yake kutia manadhiri na kumsomea dua yeye mwanatao mwanamke mwingine maarufu ungependa kumwandika ni mwana hadie famao mwana hadie famao pia alikuwa mwanachuoni mkubwa kutoka pate mwana hadie alisomesha wanachuoni wingi hapo pate akaenda paka siu kusomesha na akafikia lamu kusomesha uh, uh, watu kutoka lamu yeye alikufa lamu na kaburi lake liko amu uh, liko amu eh, kama milki ya makavazi ya Kenya mpaka sasa watu huenda katika kaburi la mahadifa mao uzuru kumtilia dua na pia kuweka nadhiri mwanamke wa mwisho ningependa kumwandika katika kitabu changu ni mwana kupona binti Sham mwana kupona binti Sham alikuwa mke wa mwisho wa bwana Mataka bwana Mataka alikuwa sultan wa mwisho wa Siu walijaliwa kupata watoto wawili mwana kupona alikuwa mshairi maarufu kisiwa cha Pate alipokuwa katika hali mahututi alikuwa na hofu kuwa atakufa na atamwata binti yake kupambana na changamoto nyingi za kidunia akaonolea um, amtungie ushairi wa kumpa ye wasia na atakavyo pambana na changamoto za kidimwengu uh, msia mwana binti yake awe na adabu njema atangamane na watu kwa vizuri na anapolewa amheshimu mumewe kwa uzuri na awe na adabu nzuri na mumewe kuwa mumewe ndio chanzo cha kumtia yeye peponi e, alitunga ushairi huo mwaka wa 1858 e, alikufa ali mwaka 1860 asante sana Bimobani agbara lati se ise idejade onko ni ede Africa kan ma yan ede kan ninu mejeji ede Yoruba sabi Naija Fiji sugbon nisin si eje kin so ti Yoruba na iwe na je iwe ere asha ti se alaworan olososu ti a fi ede Yoruba gbe kale to fi itan igba ni itan akoni ati itan igbalode yoruba han lati ko awon omode ni eko oyela yoruba ni a o ma pe akole iwe ere asha ti ise alawo ran olososu na abala marun ni iwe na yo ni abala kini yo wa fun ere asha ti ise alawo ran yoruba na abala keji yo wa fun ewi alohun ati apile ko yoruba kan ti o le je orin oriki itando we tabi omiran habala keta yo wa fun ilana imoju to ilera o nje eso ati oge sise habala keri ni a o ti ma safihan omo lu abi yoruba ko kan pelu itan igbesi aye won ati eko ti an ko lara won iroyin olososu ati ere mode ni o ma safihan ni abala karun iwe ere alaworan na fun awon omode bi o ba je naija pidi ni molo eyi yo kari asha ti ise orilede nigeria yo si gborode awon orilede africa yeku iwe na yo ma se afihan itan ise ati alo iyapo kan ni nigeria lati gbe asha ajogun balaroge ati lati ko awon odo mode ni eko If I have any opportunity to publish a book in African language it shall be in Isa it shall be either a collection of folk tales or narrative poetry that are rooted in the Isan culture this is very important because a lot of folk tales and narrative poetry in Isa are frightfully going into extinct because they are in oral form which means they were not documented but exist in the memory of men and women as repository because it was 
orally transferred to them. At the moment, those who heard this oracle of most communities are dying, and the younger ones who are expected to take responsibility of the repository are keen about Western education. This apathy towards communal origin and the death of those who heard it prior to the emergence of Western education have posed very serious danger resulting to near extinction of communal origin. It is based on this view that it is very important to ensure the collection and documentation of the existing origin in the language of its origin, in its form of narration and scope. This is important because it will ensure the preservation of existing origin in its existing language. Therefore, it shall serve as a source of learning, entertainment, and reference. It shall also provide an example for subsequent documentation as well as ensure improvement on indigenous language use for documentation. Mimi kwa upande wangu ningetengeneza uchapishaji wa mashairi wa namna peke. Uchapishaji huu tuseme gazeti dogo lingekuwa la mashairi lenye toleo kila mwezi. Na kila mwezi litaleta shairi moja la lugha ya Kiafrika pamoja na tafsiri zake saba. Na za tafsiri saba hizo angalau tano zitakuwa za lugha za Kiafrika. Na zile tafsiri mbili nyingine zinaweza kuwa za lugha za Ulaya ama za kokote duniani. Pamoja na hizo tafsiri saba, kungekuwa na pia tafsiri ya shairi kuingia aina nyingine ya sanaa, yani multimodal translation. Liwe mchoro ama wimbo ama sanamu ama hata barua inayoandikwa kwa mkono ama kitu kingine. Yaani mfasiri alilete shairi kutoka ushairi kuingia tuseme uchoraji ama muziki. Kulingana na namna ya sanaa, labda ingebiri msomaji wa gazeti atumie mtandao kupata uzoefu wa tafsiri hiyo, yani tafsiri ya nane ya shairi ya Motimodo. Na jina la gazeti langu lingekuwa ni shairi moja mbili tatu nne. Yani kwa Kiingereza poem 1234 pamoja na alama hiyo ya udondoshaji wa maneno kwa sababu kiujumla kuna tafsiri nane kama navyoeleza na jina lake jina la gazeti ni jina la Kiswahili sio la Kiingereza shairi moja mbili tatu nne I would like to make a written publication in Incipiti in the form of maxims that capture the contradictions of modernity to the African. My choice of in CBD is informed by a number of factors. It's not only an ancient Eastern Nigerian script, uh, having originated around 400 to 1400 Common Era, possibly earlier at about 2000 BC. It's by far the most comprehensive ancient indigenous script in West Africa after Tifinag and most part of Central and Southern Africa. Well, coupled with the fact that it is an ideograph, similar to the Egyptian hieroglyphs, it seems very much apt to convey ideas indigenous to Africa. The only snag is that since it's not been in use for the most part of a millennium, now it has not had the opportunity to enrich itself with modern concepts and notions. But I would have circumvented that by extending the semantic ambit of some of the ideographs to achieve polysemy, much the same way English speakers do with English words. One of the maxims I would have loved to create is, one, with modernity came the good and the bad, and several others like it. With modernity, if I may explain, came access to Western civilization, which has fast-tracked the African's access to global discourse and has enriched his mind and moods of doing things, including participating in global intellectual arenas. 
However, it has also, with this great leap, created a stunting atmosphere for traditional indigenous modes of activity to either be extinct or greatly reduced to dysfunctionality. This leaves the African uh, on the threshold of in-betweenness that will forever haunt him, as he will never be able to recover that which was or has been fawned from him which shouldn't have been so if he was allowed to make a choice from the background of untainted indigeneity. He would have appropriated modernity in ways that served his best interest for a long time to come. Even improving on his traditional modes of understanding his contemporary reality considerably. Panikuti nditaure pa musoro pechinyor wache kungo fungizira. Rega indi taure pa musoro pe chinu chino tuwa vapo. Mugore la 2019, ndakatanga kunyora blog, riri pa musoro pe tzika ni magariro shivano ve muno mu Zimbabwe. Rino nzi Zimbo original. Asinda ingo nyora nye ze blog iri nechirungu chete. Andi zive kuti iro blog ringa tana ngurwe richinzi publication yere. Jisi nei, rega indi ngo endere ramberi. Nikuda kwe kunyora uku, ndakazo tanga kuwa na shikumbiro jakasiana. Uvakuwa anuwaifari la kuwiringa nyaya za ndai inyora. Kunyangu ya asu ndai inyora ni chirungu. Ndai wana mivunzo ineche kuita ni mita uro yedu ye chivano. Ndipo pandaka zotanga kuchaka nzira zekure ruta matambu ziku alikusanga na niva na vadiki pa kuziza mita uro we chishona. Niku daro, muna 2023 ndaka weze rapane blog ria ndo kutanga kuturi kila nyaya ze vadiki ni chiisa mumu mita uro we chishona. Saka ndaka gazi radura zivu, rinuwa nika online. Rinenge rine nyaya ziva diki ziri mchishona nechirungu. Ndinopota ndi chuwe zira nyaya icha, nguva ni nguva, kutirira mbe richikura. Ndaka saru za kugazi radura zivu, rewe chidiki. Nukuti ndaka wanadambu ziko riripo, paku wana mabuku e kuwerenga, ari mumita oro yedu ye chivano. Kuri kuita awoshe vanuwe muno musimbabwe, wakata amira kunezi mwenyika. Vanoda kuti vana vavo vazizi mita oro ye kumusha. Vanoda wazakare mabuku e kuti vana ava vave rengi. Asi andi nyore kuwa na mabuku acho uri kunze uko. Ndinoona se kuti kuwa nika kwe zinyoru wa zewe chidiki ziri mchishona. Chinu chaka kosha chaizu pa kusimu zira kuzizwa ne kuchenge tezeka kwe mita oro we chishona. Kuvamu urukuru ne chaki rizo zese zandaka ita maere rano nedura zivora ngu iri. Ndakao na kutipachiri nebasa guru cha izu, kutitishike pa kutiva zizisi, vaga mchire kushandi iswa kwe zinyoru wa shiri digital. Jakare, ndakao na kutipane vanu wakati wandei, vanu ona se kutimitauro yedu yechi vanu iji, hainane basa rese. Zinu izi, shiri kuramba shichikonze resa kutimitauro yedu iite ichikanga anuiwa. Zisi nei, ndinovi mba kutiva shandi siwe dura zivora angu, vacha ita vachiwe zira, ni kufamba kwenguru. Language is the means by which human beings interact with one another. It is a means of communication. It is also the means by which we have knowledge of other minds, which is actually one of the things publication does for us. That one can be in an entirely different place, in another country separated by time and distance, and yet have dialogue with other minds. Through what has been published, we get to know the thoughts and ideas of other people who are not within our own space. Publication, as we know, means to make something public. It may take the form of that which is documented in written form or oral presentation as we can see in our present day society. African languages may not be as popular as the widely spoken English language, French, Portuguese, Spanish, and Arabic language. However, as a medium of self-expression, it performs the function that other languages of non-African origin do. And we know that so much has been published in many foreign languages like English, French, Portuguese, Spanish, Russian, Arabic, Mandarin, etc. Such power to create a publication of any type, mode, or format in any African language is an opportunity for the development promotion and popularization of African languages, and also an opportunity to express oneself in the language of his choice. And lastly, it makes us know the language preference of many Africans. 
Now, if I had the opportunity to create a publication, I would readily opt for a podcast, a digital audio file that can be taken from the internet and played on a computer or a device that you can carry with you. That is, I would rather publish something the people will listen to, to learn and acquire, and acquire knowledge from. And coming to the African language to be used, I would prefer to create such publication in Igbo language. Igbo language is a language that is spoken in the southeastern part of Nigeria, Cameroon and Equatorial Guinea. So, in conclusion, if I had the power, I would use it to do a podcast in Igbo language. Thank you. Leo ninawasilisha pendekezo la kuanzisha jarida la kisayansi la Kiswahili linalojikita katika masuala ya mazingira na mabadiliko ya tabianchi katika eneo la Afrika Mashariki. Pendekezo hili linatokana na uchunguzi wa kina wa changamoto za kimazingira zinazokumba eneo letu na umuhimu wa kuunganisha utafiti wa kisayansi na jamii. Kama alivyosisitiza Profesa Wangari Mathai ambaye ni mshindi wa tuzo ya Nobel ya Amani Hatuwezi kusubiri hadi kesho. Hatupaswi kuacha kwa vizazi vijavyo. Wakati ni sasa na kila mmoja wetu ana jukumu la kufanya maamuzi sahihi. Maneno haya yanasisitiza umuhimu wa kuchukua hatua za haraka na shirikishi katika kukabiliana na changamoto za kimazingira. Jarida linalokusudiwa litakuwa chombo cha kuunganisha tafiti za kisayansi na maendeleo ya jamii litachapishwa kila robo mwaka na kujumuisha vipengele vinne ambavyo ni kwanza makala za utafiti makala haya yatawasilisha yata matokeo ya utafiti wa hali ya juu unaofanywa na wanasayansi wa Afrika Mashariki ukizingatia mbinu za utafiti zinazotumika katika masomo ya Afrika pili ni uchambuzi wa sera ambao utajumuisha tathmini ya kina ya sera za mazingira katika nchi za Afrika Mashariki ukichambua athari zake kwa jamii na mazingira. Tatu ni taarifa za miradi ambazo zitaangazia miradi ya kuhifadhi mazingira inayotekelezwa katika jamii za Afrika Mashariki zikitumia mbinu za utafiti shirikishi. Nne ni sehemu ya elimu kwa jamii. Hii itafafanua dhana ngumu za kisayansi kwa lugha rahisi ikitumia mifano halisi kutoka katika mazingira ya Afrika Mashariki. Kwa kutumia Kiswahili Jarida hili litafikia hadhira pana zaidi likiziba pengo katikati ya utafiti wa kisayansi na utekelezaji wake katika jamii. Hii inauiana na dhana ya ubunifu wa wenyeji ambayo imekuwa msingi wa tafiti nyingi katika masomo ya Afrika. Zaidi ya hayo, jarida hili litakuza na kuendeleza istilahi za kisayansi katika Kiswahili likichangia katika maendeleo ya lugha za Kiafrika kama chombo cha kuelezea dhana za kisayansi. Hii ni hatua muhimu katika kuimarisha hadhi ya lugha za Kiafrika katika nyanja za kitaaluma. Pendekezo hili litachangia katika mjadala unaoendelea kuhusu umuhimu wa kutumia lugha za Kiafrika katika elimu ya juu na utafiti. Linaonyesha jinsi lugha za Kiafrika zinaweza kutumiwa kuwasilisha mawazo ya kisayansi ya hali ya juu huku zikihakikisha kuwa maarifa haya yanafikia jamii pana zaidi. Asante. Those were all the contributions we received this month. What did you think of these diverse ideas for publications in African languages? What was your favorite suggestion and why? If you had the power to create such a publication, what would you make? Feel free to tell us in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Africanists Assemble and listening to the beautiful languages and the knowledge contained within them that we are privileged to feature. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? This is episode 37. Come on. <laughs> See you in the next episode. Accelerator, educator, true economic empowerment, accelerator.